Yo, what is good guys? Back with game 2 between Malakis and Eternal Spirit. Ulti round 1, if Malakis wins, he wins the entire set. If Eternal Spirit wins, we will get a game 3. Looking at the teams, I assume it is Rocky Hammer torn on Eternal Spirit's side. Otherwise, he's really weak to Kartana. Uh, Rocky Hammer with Defog, Hurricane Knockoff, last move either Taunt or U-Turn. Also helps with the Tapu Bulu matchup. Land was likely to be Scarf. Scarf Hooper is not really common. Um, yeah, Scarf Land for speed control, likely with HPIs to help with the Zygat matchup. Um, Hooper is pretty nice in this to check the Alakazam, can also take a hit from a potential Ash Greninja. The move is either on the Hooper or on the Megina. Um, though Megina could also be a Salt Vest. Eternal Spirit is really weak to Tapu Koko. He's not so weak to Alakazam since he has Hooper and Scarf Lando is what I assume. They can check Alakazam, he has packs which can check Greninja. But Tapu Koko um, with T-Bolt and HP destroys his team so AV Megina still makes sense. Not have, it doesn't have to be though. Um, and yeah, the end is gonna be rocks. It could be rocks protect two attacks, or it could be rocks three attacks. Turn one of Amalekas here. I would either click earthquake um, because that covers the end. going for protect, and then the next turn he could double. Or if you want to make, I think making a double is even a better play. Though the thing is, he doesn't really have a double that covers everything. Um, potential doubles he has is double into Clefable. Double into Clefable covers the end. going for protect. Covers Torn and Lando coming out somewhat. Another option is double into Ferrothorn. That doesn't cover the Torn that well, but it also covers the Protect on the DNC and it covers the Lando coming out. Uh, another option is double into Greninja, which covers Protect from the NZ, covers Lando coming out, and sort of covers Torn coming out. Though if Torn is max HP Rocky Helmet, it would probably be able to lift any one hit from Greninja, unless it's like Life or Protein, which is not common at all these days. But double into Gren still covers most options, since Eternal Spirit doesn't know anything about the Greninja yet. I think he still might have. Uh, to g might have to go Pax if he goes Torn here. But yeah, if a Spirit has Protect, he's obviously just gonna click it. If he doesn't have it, he's probably just gonna switch out into Torn or Lando. I think Torn is a bit more likely. So uh, you either Earthquake predicting him to have the Protect, or you switch out making one of the three doubles that I mentioned. But going for U-Turn, I don't agree with that play. If Eternal Spirit is likely to get his Rocks up here, we're probably gonna see a switch into Clef or Ferrothon. We see the Ferrothon, there are the Rocks. Now Malakas might just power up, fearing Eternal Spirit to stay in. Eternal Spirit is known to just like stay in on a lot of things. Um, the safe play here is just going Tornado. That's the play I would make. I don't know what Eternal Spirit is gonna do, but yeah, he's probably just. I think I think even Eternal Spirit goes to Torn here, right? So Malakas has the option to predict that, go for spikes or rocks if he has that, or he might just play it safe and go for power up. Does just go for power up, okay? So now um, Eternal Spirit is probably just going to throw off a knockoff because I think if the enemy might just be Protect, Rocks, Double Step, which means he doesn't have HP Fire. So just knocking off, uh, getting rid of Ferrothorn's leftovers if Malakis stays in is amazing for Eternal Spirit. Chipping down Ferrothorn, um, uh, if Ferrothorn gets chipped, it's eventually in range of Hoopa. It also helps Megiana and also helps the DNC. DNC actually goes in versus Malakis if Ferrothorn gets chipped. Now we're likely gonna see a lead sheet here from Malakis. Transpiro doesn't really have a good switch in so he just throws out a hurricane. Both missed there so that was a nice and useless turn uh, but I assume he's just gonna see the lead sheet again here as he does connect the hurricane this time. It only does 27% gets a confusion. Does not hit himself though. Uh, yeah I would probably just switch out here into the tox specs if I'm Eternal Spirit. There's not really a point staying in because all you will do is give the Ferrothorn lead sheet recovery back. Um, yeah, also talking about Malakis' team, I'm not sure if the Z is on Grand, Mens or Clef, because he is really weak to like Scissor and Katana, so he could also be a bulky Mens with Flamethrower or Fire Blast, with like Roost, uh, with Intimidate, and then with like maybe Earthquake for Heatran, though it might not have Earthquake since he already has Alakazam, Mega Alakazam, Greninja and L Scarf Lando to check Heatran, but yeah, that's definitely an option. And if it's not that set that bulky mans, and if it's Z-Mans, I still think he needs a fire move on either Clef, Zam, or I guess maybe on the Greninja, because he's just so weak to Scizor, right? So like, either HP Fire, Zam, Flamethrower, Clef, or Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Mans, um, or like HP Fire, Grin, but like one of the four kind of has to be in my opinion, right? But yeah, Transformer should switch out into Toxapex, there's really no point staying in here. He only does a little bit of chip to the Ferrothorn and he risks losing his Tornado, so he should switch out into Pax. Um, it turns pretty Malakas could predict that and go for a uh, Leech Sheet, is what, I is what I was trying to say. Also, since he revealed his entire moveset on Ferrothorn, he's Protect, Leech Sheet, Power Whip, and Rocks. We know that the Clef does not have Rocks, which means the Clef is likely to be a Calm Mind, Softbot, Moonblast, plus Coverage move, um, which could be T Bolt, Thunder, could be, um, uh, could be a Fire move, because I talked about the Bad Scissor matchup. 
It, I don't think it's going to be focused based on this build because he has multiple heatron checks already. So yeah, just so that the toxic spike Alakazam comes out. Okay, so if I'm Alakaz here, you have the option to go for focus blast or shadow ball because he's not going to stay in with the packs. If he loses the packs, the uh, Greninja potential Ash Greninja becomes a huge problem. Uh, packs, if it's mixed defensive, can also help check the Salamence. So Pax is there's just no reason you to sack it here. If you AV Megina, then you always go to Megina, I feel. I feel like that. Mm -hmm. If not, this is actually a tough position for Eternal Spirit. Because I think Hooper probably gets to it killed with Rocks up. Uh, let me run a calc on this side. So Hooper versus Alakazam. Shadow Ball does 31.8 to 37.5 and Focus Blast does 47.5 to 56.1. So Hooper actually gets Tweet KO'd after Rocks by Focus Blast or uh, even Focus Blast into Shadow Ball might have a chance with Rocks up to Tweet KO. So I would just go for, like you can either make the double into Landris here if you're Malakis because that covers the Magiana and the Hooper or you go for your attack which is either Shadow Ball or Focus Blast because Shadow Ball or Focus Blast hits Magiana and Hooper harder than Psychic. If that makes any sense. And yeah, yeah, you either go for that, focus blast or shadow ball, or you double into Landris. Eternal Spirit is taking his time here. Oh no, Malakas is taking his time, never mind. So he doubles into Landris, um, predicting either the Hooper or the Megina. Um, Megina makes more sense to me since the Hooper, like I said, I told you guys, the cult gets bobbed by like focus blast after rocks, but he goes actually into his own Landris. I'm not sure what he predicted there. Maybe he predicted a focus blast or shadow ball, knowing that he's not going to psychic with the Megina and the Hooper there. And yeah, Malakas goes for default because toxic spikes will annoy Greninja and Zam after Zam Megas. Now he knows that Eternal Spirit is locked into HPI, so he's obviously going to switch. And he's also locked into... They're both going to switch out, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, Eternal Spirit is... Goes in the Hooper there, okay, so he predicts the Alakazam to come out. This also sort of covers the Greninja. Pretty much, Malakas was gonna go to one of Alakazam, Pharaoh, Clef, or Gren. He was gonna go to one of those four. He was not gonna go to Mens, obviously, on a potential HPI. Uh, it was also really obvious that Eternal Spirit was gonna double there. And yeah, Hooper was not even a bad play as it covered the Alakazam. It covers the Gren if the Gren is Ash, because Ash doesn't really run U-turn, but Eternal Spirit should sw still switch out into either Pax or the Anzi here to scout for the Greninja having U-turn. Um, U-turn is usually only used on Choice Scarf Protein Gren. Sometimes it's also seen on Z5, but he goes the Anzi as Malakas goes for Spikes, uh, so Malakas predicted the Toxapex, but that was just not worth it since he sees there's a D Anzi. Um, going the Anzi was obviously a risky play on Eternal Spirit's side. Um, but I think if you're Malakith there, you either attack, which covers, like, the DNC. It doesn't really cover the packs, obviously, because the packs would just eat it up. But you either attack there or you pull a double. Going for spikes is just too risky. He could have potentially pulled a double into Alakazam, which would have um, covered the Toxa packs. And it also kind of would have covered the DNC. It would not really cover, have covered the DNC because Psychic versus DNC, I think, is a roll. DNC is at 85%, if I recall correctly. Um, there wasn't really a reason to sub. I guess he predicted the Clef and he didn't want a Dark Pulse or Hyperspace into the Clef. That's why he subbed. But Malakas was never going to click Protect because Ho Hooper um, can carry Hyperspace Fury, which goes through Protect anyway. But yeah, I think Eternal Spirit is just going to go for his best move that he has to hit this, which is, which is either Dark Pulse or Focus Blast, or it might also be Z. And Malakith, um doesn't really have a switch into this Hooper. But I guess if he breaks a fighting move or a Dark Pulse, he can pivot into Maggie Clef or Mans. He does pivot into Mans. And let's see what he goes for. Dark Pulse, that does so much. So let's run a Kalk. Um, that did so much, dude. So let's say Salamence versus Hooper. I think that this Salamence either does not have any bulk or the Hooper is modest. Um, so yeah, let me see a roost here if he's bulky man. Did he have Intimidate? I didn't pay attention to that. He did have Intimidate. Did he? No. Yeah, he did have Intimidate with the Mans. So he's probably the bulky man that he doesn't have leftover, so it could be Rocky Helmet. So bulky set with probably a fire coverage move, Flamethrower, Fire Blast. Uh, it turns Spirit is probably going to U-turn here just because he doesn't want to lose momentum. He doesn't want to HP Ice into a potential Clef, Pharaoh Thorn, or something like that. So U-turn just makes more sense. Malakas stayed in. What did he go for? Uh, I think you just go into your Toxapex if you're Eternal Spirit because it covers all options and it scouts, but he goes DNC instead. He gets bopped by Hydro Pump. That was just not the play. I'm, I'm really surprised as well to see the Hydro Pump, don't get me wrong, but Pex is super free there. The Mance is at minus one. Pex has good 
probably Spadev investment. I assume the practice mixed defensive on the other side. There was just no reason to go the Anthe. Hydropump is really interesting. I did not expect that. I expected like a ro if if, I, if the man's really is bulky, I expected it to be like a roost, maybe fire move set with like maybe earthquake, and then the last move could have been like I don't know HPI or maybe Defog. But he already showed Defog on Lando, so I don't know if it's Defog on this as well. But I definitely did not expect that. So now we're gonna see the Megina or the Hooper come up most likely from Eternal Spirit. Damn. So like two two or three plays so far that I don't agree with in this game. I would have never spiked if I'm Malikis, but it was just too risky in my opinion. Um Eternal Spirit's play was also really risky going the NC, but it worked out. But there was another play that... Oh yeah, now going DNC on the men's. I just don't get why he did that. Yes, uh, okay, I, I somewhat get why he did it. But I just think it was too risky when he had a pack that was super free there. The next turn he could have still potentially doubled. Like there's a difference between a smart double... A smart playing aggressive and just too risky in my opinion. But yeah, now Hooper is probably going to throw out um, either the Z Dark Pulse or maybe the Psychic. We still don't know if Hooper or... Um, Megina has the Z. Since the Hooper showed sub, it's definitely not specs, obviously, and we see, we've seen from the damage. But yeah, I've been running some calcs at the side. The Hooper is either modest, which is why it did so much to the men's, or the men's just doesn't have HP investment, and the men's might just have only bulk investment in, like, defense, and then the rest in speed or something like that, or in Spadev, I'm really not sure. But if the Hooper is timid, the men's really did not have much HP or not any at all. But if it's modest, then it's possible that the men's was really HP invested. But yeah, um, Hydro Pump, uh, Hooper, going Hooper that was obviously fine since he saw it was bulky Mans and he knows Hooper has great spadef. And even if Mans has another physical move, uh, Hooper can eat it up with the Intimidate easily. So Landers is just going to U-turn here. Uh, he could double also. I think doubling is actually the better play because you, you don't want to take Rocky Helmet damage. So like, a doubling into Alakazam there if the Torn already was in Psychic range is definitely a good play. Though I think... Without that U-turn, I think Psychic might have been a roll. Now with that U-turn, Psychic guaranteed kills. Uh, let me run a calc on the side. So we have Alakazam versus Tornadoes. This should be like 70 ish is my head calc. 60.7 to 72. Okay. So now it's like really heavily in the favor of Malekith. But without that U-turn, it wasn't. So um, does he go for Shadow Ball? Goes for Hidden Power. Is that Hidden Power Ice or Hidden Power Fire? Um, yeah, pretty much... I don't know, if the men's didn't have a fire move, this might be HP fire, but he can just go for hidden power again here. If I'm Eternal Spirit here, I think I just sack the Hooper. Unless he's AV McGinner, but he goes McGinner, let's see if he's AV. It is hidden power fire, wow. But like, why did he not... I wasn't sure for a second if it's HP ice or fire, but HP fire makes sense since he is so weak to scissor. And we don't know if the, the men's didn't show the fire move yet, right? Why did he go Megina? He saved the Hooper that is almost dead to let the Megina take such a huge hit. So the Megina might actually be Z-move since the Hooper never went for Z-move. So now he pivots into Scarf Lander knowing that it can take the next HP fire. And it's really obvious that Malakus is going to go for HP fire again. Since that's the only move that can kill the Megina. So Turns Root is going to go for U-turn here. Malakus is going to switch out um, into Clef or his own land will likely. Dude, why did he save his Hooper that is almost dead? To let a Megina that is potentially Z move since Hooper didn't show Z move. He let the Megina take such a huge hit and they're like the Megina's a potential win con too. Um it, cause the the Pharaoh already is knocked off. Right? The Pharaoh is um But yeah, I assume we just see a U-turn here as he goes into Landorus. Should be able to live that. Yep. And now he can just bring out his Torn here. And then he can just click Hurricane. Because Hurricane is pretty free versus Eternal Spirit. If Eternal Spirit um, versus Malakis, my bad, I'm mixing up the names. You can just go in a Torn and fire off a Hurricane. Because Malakis does not have a good switch in at all. Um, I guess he might go for a Scarf Defog here to just sack this. But yeah, his Ferrothorn is at 68, so I guess his Ferrothorn could lift too, but yeah, he just stay into HPIs. I don't know if HPIs was the play, because the Tornado is just going to regen back to full. I think if you stay in, defogging might have been better. Also, if Malekith... I don't think Malekith had Edge on the on the land, right? But earlier when he U-turned, if he had Edge, he could have clicked Edge instead, breaking the really obvious Torn, or he could have pulled a double... But he didn't really have a great double that covered the Torn. To be, to be fair, he didn't. Malekith does not have good doubles for Torn. So U-turning earlier, I guess, might have been a fine play to bring the Torn in Psychic range. So he does not get the 
roll there with Psychic. Gets a really low roll. I think it does 60 to 72 is what I said earlier. Let me look it up again. Yeah, that's what I said, right? 60.7 to 72. So now Town Spirit is obviously going to switch out Sack D Hooper here, most likely. And the yeah, Amalekus can probably go for the Shadow Ball here. Um, or even HP Fire. But Shadow Ball seems super free at this. Is if, if La Unless Lando is not in range. How healthy is Eternal Spirit's Lando? Is that 38? Might not be in range, actually. So if it's not in range, then Psychic might be the better play. How healthy is the Hooper, though? Hooper's at 21, which means, yeah, Psychic is free here, because even if he goes in the Hooper, you can then just kill it the next turn with Shadow Ball. Um, so this Zam already showed HP Fire. Sh Did it show Shadow Ball? I don't, I don't remember if it showed Shadow Ball yet, but Psychic is what it showed. But yeah, Zorn Spirit is gonna save this Tornadus. There's no reason to sack the Torn as he sacked off the Hooper. Yeah, Psychic obviously fine. Now Shadow Ball should be able to kill Hooper from 21. Uh, let me run a card, I guess, to make sure. Yeah, Shadow Ball is 31 min to 37. I already ran, the, I already ran that card earlier, I just forgot about it. So yeah, he can just go for Shadow Ball here. He has Dazzling Gleam, okay. So he has no Recover on this Alakazam. He's four attacks, not a big fan of that. Recover is really useful versus like weaker mons that don't have great... Like Alakazam is good natural spadav. Recover is amazing versus like non Z Heatran to check that because Earth Power only does like 38, I think. So yeah, Metan's Robert just gets a U-turn here with Scarf Landris. Um, for momentum, uh, he's getting gonna take some Iron Bobs. Oh yeah, Earthquake is the play. I don't know why I said U-turn. Earthquake was super free. The only reason why I thought U-turn was because in in case Malakith wants to go Clef. Because I think Clef could have taken two Earthquakes. But maybe he's offensive Clef, that's why he didn't go to it. So now Tom Spirit has to switch out, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much I thought he wouldn't... I thought it would U-turn because Clef could take two Earthquakes, but it turns Malekith didn't go Clef, which means he might be offensive Z. Since the Mans was Helmet, Greninja is likely Specs Ash. So now it turns Spirit has to go into his packs and um, I guess just haze it because it's obviously Calm Mind, but he goes for Moonblast. That does 30 in confirming that it's offensive Clef. So he goes for Calm Mind. Does he Hard Haze predicting that? No, he just goes for t spike. So the question is, does this have T-Bolt? Is it goes for Z? Does he have the Z Giga? Ooh, he has the Z Giga Ball. And it kills actually. Wow. So this Clefable has special attack investment. So it's like probably modest Clef, or at least some sort of special attack investment for it to, for that to die. So Megina, how does Megina beat this? Is it Z Cox could crash or if it's Z Fairy? Is it uh, we're gonna run some calcs at this side? This calc can be pretty important. So Megina was Clefable. At first, we're probably gonna see a comment exactly and Malakis throws out a Moonblast hoping for the Spatak drop, does not get it. And now if it's Z Cox will crash, it's gonna kill. If it's Z Trinkle Tackle, I have the Kalk here. It does 37.8 to 103% if it's Trinkle Tackle. Assuming this Clefable does not have Spadef investment. Uh, also, that's assuming the Clef is max HP. If the Clef is not max HP, Trinkle Tackle even has a has an even better chance to kill. And yeah, Cox could crash would obviously kill, but that set is not common. So I assume it's going to be Trinkle Tackle. If it's not Trinkle Tackle, if it's just Giga Vault, Eternal Spirit obviously just loses here. But let's see what he has. Trinkle Tackle is a roll, does get the roll, kills the Clefable. And um, I mean, this is not over yet, but Eternal Spirit actually might have just brought it back. He has, he has good chances now to bring it back. So the Alakazam comes out. It's just going to click HP Fire here. And Eternal Spirit is either going to have to sack this to go Scarf Lando, or he can go into Torn here. I think going into Torn here is definitely a good option. Because you can go into Torn on the HP Fire, which will do like maybe 20%, maybe 28 It will do less than 33 basically. And then you can s switch out the next turn, sack the Megiana, um, and then your tornado is gained a little bit of health. He does do that exactly. Great play, great play. Because you can see it only does 25. I thought it was on 20, 28, something like that. Now you can switch back into Megina and sack it. Uh, Malakis can just go for Psychic here. So you can switch back into Megina and sack it. And then his tornado is actually gained a few percent, like 8%. So that was really smart. Yeah. So I don't know why he went for Dazzling Gleam there. I think Psychic was always the play, but it didn't make a difference. Now he took an extra. T well, yeah, Psychic would not have killed anyway. 
Okay, I did the seed for a second. So he just clicked U-turn to pick off the KO on the Alakazam. Now Greninja comes out, and Greninja has to click Water Shuriken because if he locks into a move that is not Water Shuriken to kill the Torn, then he loses to the Scarf Landris. After Toxic Spikes, he will definitely be in range of Earthquake. So he has to go for Shuriken, and he needs, I think, four hits. Because Max HP Torn takes 28 to 34 from three hits Greninja Water Shuriken. And he only gets two hits. Uh, which means the Torn Spirit probably, yeah, just wins now. He switches back and the Poison probably kills the Greninja. And if it doesn't kill, Torn might still be able to live. But I think the Poison just wins it for um, a Torn Spirit. So, yeah, Malakas did misplay at the end. Okay, ABR is talking about this turn. Um, after the Magina kills off the Clefable, he went out into Alakazam. And I think, um, yeah, if he went into Greninja and clicked Hydro Pump there, he pretty much would have won the game. I didn't realize that at that point. So that was... That was the misplay, and the other misplay was, uh, yeah, the, the spike was just way too risky. Even though you can say Torn Spirit going the NC was also super risky. You just never spike there, I don't think. Like, the spike doesn't get you enough to the point where it's worth it that you risk getting a spike on your own side. Um, so, yeah, the spike that he got on his own side, plus not going Greninja here on turn 37, actually lost him the game. But, yeah, he still needed to hit a pump. But yeah, maybe I um, explained that in the chat. I actually didn't catch this one. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. We will get a game three, um, which is hype. Stay tuned for that. Smash that like button if you enjoy. And peace out, friends. Have a fantastic day.